Main Street Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I know it's been a little while since I've posted but I've been awfully busy getting ready for the World Cosplay Summit and actually that's kind of what this video is all about. Uh, as mentioned before in my announcements video, uh, one of my next projects it was to be Yona, Princess Yona from Yona of the Dawn, my absolute favorite manga series. Megwin and I decided to do Yona and Lily for the Osu Parade, which is one of the WCS events. So I thought I'd take you guys along as I work on this project. Now, Princess Yona is a character that I love very, very much, and she's probably one of my favorite characters of all time, at least in the top five. So this project has been a little while coming, and I feel like this was the perfect opportunity to finally cosplay as Princess Yona. Like any good sewing project, the first step is to figure out patterns. Now, in Yona's case, her outfit is mostly based on traditional Japanese garments, which are mostly square based with a few adjustments, like room for the neck holes and things like that. So this is all made out of linen and natural fibers for the most part. And this beautiful linen is from SY Fabrics. It washed beautifully. It's a beautiful, beautiful color and is really soft and will be very comfortable in the Japanese heat. Now, this costume is pretty simple in shape. As you can see, not many of the shapes are very complicated. There's not too many complicated curves, which made the cutting process actually really quite fast. The sewing process was also pretty quick for the most part on this tunic or underdress. Both of the side seams on the skirt are actually with French seams, so a nice inside seam that's nice and enclosed and finished so that the linen does not fray. I felt like this just kind of worked a little better and felt a little bit more authentic for the skirt, especially because the skirt might flip up a little bit and move around. So you can kind of just see me here working a little bit on those French seams to make them nice and crisp and finished. There are no closures on this particular garment, so there was no need to work with a, a back seam, a zipper, or anything of that nature, which was one of my goals with this whole piece. Hemming was also relatively quick. Now, this skirt is actually more of an A-line than anything, so it's a little bit more stylized than this garment probably would have been if it was an authentic shape, but I kind of wanted that stylized element, so the hem is actually a bit curved, as most A-line skirts are. And as you can see, that is a finished skirt or skirt piece. Now this just needs to be added to the bodice. So let's go make the bodice right now. As you can see, the, the pieces for the bodice are pretty simple as well. Mostly pretty square with neck holes and armholes. So nothing too complicated in this area and also really easy to fit over my head. Now, I didn't want to French seam everything because when you get into armholes and stuff, it gets a little trickier. So, and I want to kind of go a little faster because I am kind of on a crunch for the World Cosplay Summit at this point. So the edges for this particular piece were all surged. Due to fabric limitations, I did have to put a back seam, unfortunately, but that actually added as a good guide point later on for another little piece that I added to this bodice. The seams are all pretty simple. They are straight seams and then pressed open after the fact to keep them nice and crisp and clean. This is much faster than a French seam, and so for this sake, this works really, really well. The trickiest part, if I could call it tricky, was honestly the neckline because, well, curves are always a little harder to press down and so flat than anything else. But my iron is fantastic, so it was quite simple to do. I'm not gonna say that this cosplay was very complicated or anything. This is a very simple project and was meant to be a very simple project because it is just something I really wanted to do and really wanted to do because I love the character. Yona, as I mentioned, is one of my favorite characters of all time, so it was the perfect opportunity to wear something light, easy, breezy, and of a character that I really love. The World Cosplay Summit gave me an excellent opportunity to do so. As many of you know, I am making this Yona cosplay for one of the cosplay sets myself and Mei Gwen will be wearing to Nagoya, Japan during the World Cosplay Summit. Um, and specifically, we're making Lily, 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 and Yona together for one of the outdoor events, the Osu Parade. Now, Japan is hot. Okay, and we're Canadian. So something I've decided to do for this cosplay, since I know I'll be outdoors, is to add a little pocket to the back neckline area. So like right around 
here so that I can put a little cooling pad in it. So I've made myself a little pocket. I hope it's big enough for a cooling pad. I'm actually not sure how big they are, but I'm gonna put a little pocket there so I have the option to put something to cool down my back neck. Because this has a vest over it, you will not see the little top stitched on pocket, but it will be there so I can cool myself down because this area right here along the spine is a good spot to put something for cooling. So I'm gonna go make the pocket now. So let's make a pocket. First, that little piece is served, and then I press down all the edges. As you can see, the top edge is pressed a little wider, and that's because it acts as a little facing. That will be the top opening piece of my little pocket. And this little pocket is made with a little scrap piece because I was running low on fabric. I did use it all. The first step for sewing a pocket is actually to sew down that facing so it doesn't get caught on things when it comes in and out of my pocket. And remember when I mentioned that little back seam? Well, it acts as a perfect guide for putting this little pocket in. And this placement is kind of ideal because it'll be right against my spine, which is kind of a good spot to kind of cool things off a little bit throughout my body. And now I am just top stitching it into place. Now this would have been a little tricky if I had the whole dress put together, so luckily I only had the bodice at this point. At this point on the bodice, I hadn't even done the side seams or the sleeves yet because I wanted that pocket to be easy to access so I can get in there nice and clean and flat. Even though this will be covered by the little vest piece later, I still wanted it to be like clean and not very obvious as well so that if I am wearing it on its own, you don't just see this big old square top stitching on the back. Now, because this garment is essentially a very long tunic, these sleeves go on first before all the side seams are done. And you can kind of see me placing them right here, just a straight long line across the shoulder line over here. The sleeves get stitched on, and then afterwards I start to do the tunic shape, the T-shape. You sew along the sleeve and all the way down the side seam. This is a really easy way to put in a sleeve, but especially a sleeve like this one because it is tunic shaped and it doesn't have a fitted armhole. So the armhole is not rounded or anything, it's just straight, meaning this is a tunic shape. It is an off shoulder, it is a loose fitting garment. So it makes doing this very easy and it makes installing a sleeve very easy because we all know putting those curvy sleeve heads in can be very annoying sometimes. So this is quite simple, yet I still have a lot of movement, un unlike you usually would get if you don't have the curved armhole. Many of the garments in Coca Kingdom, which is the setting of Yona of the Dawn, probably would have been done like this. There are a few characters that seem to have more fitted style sleeves, but for the most part, they're all square or T-shaped tunics like this one. And there is that T-shaped tunic top. And now it just needs to get attached to the skirt and then we have an underdress. All right, so at this point I have the top and the bottom skirt uh, all attached to each other, but it's a very, uh, very square looking garment and my skirt is too long. So what gives, well, I'm gonna be doing some markings along the waist. I'm not gonna be putting in a waistband. I am basically gonna be taking these two pieces together and making a waistband out of the length of the skirt. Cause the skirt is, you know, approximately two inches long, longer than it should be. So when I do that, it'll create a waistband out of the, ex the, the extra length that's already there. At least that's the plan. So I don't have to cut another waistband. I just need to put them together. I just need to kind of do some folding, do some marking, and then I'll have a waistband made just from what's already there. This little tuck is essentially just that, a tuck. I marked the measurement and then I just simply sewed it down. This is not exactly the prettiest way of making it look, but you know what? It works really well, it does the job, it was an easy way of doing it. Now you may ask, why didn't you sew it down the bottom? And that's because the A-line skirt. It wouldn't have fit very well, so this was the easiest and cleanest way to do so. This little waistband that I essentially sewed in, this little tuck, became the casing for the elastic, which is what really helps this garment shape around. Otherwise, this would be a very baggy garment, so this actually helped it be a little bit more shapely without having to have a zipper or closure. 
And in case you are wondering, the little tool I'm using here is called a bodkin, and they are excellent for pulling elastics through casing or anything else like a drawstring. So this is what the waistband essentially looks like right here. It's just a little like, it just folds over like that and it can control where the, the gathers kind of sit and everything. But yeah, it's sitting at the right spot now. It's very, very comfortable. The hem's nice and even because the waist is sitting nice and even. And uh, yeah, I am now finished the little, uh, well, try to get a good angle because I'm like talking. There we go. Yeah, so this is the base dress, very comfortable. It's got a nice little elasticized waistband that's very, very comfy um, and adjustable as well. I can also adjust this still. Hem is looking good. It's right where it needs to be. Got enough volume to make it cute. The linen makes it nice and airy. So yeah, the base garment is now complete. Next up is this vest piece and Miss Muffin inspecting my Modica petticoat. Despite the garment being very square, I decided to add some little darts just to help the back sit a little better since I have quite a curved spine. So this kind of helps it lay a little better on the finished garment. The next step is actually to hem the armhole. This garment doesn't have any shoulder seams, so I don't even have to sew shoulder seams first. This just makes it a little easier to later on go in and French seam the side seams on this garment. There aren't very many seams. This is a very small seamed garment. It is quite simple to put together, but again, very satisfying. And then doing the French seam second makes that underarm area much, much cleaner. So doing it this way was definitely a benefit. The only other piece on this garment beside the main body is the neckline, which is this long strip or band, which isn't even on the bias. Apparently they didn't cut them on the bias very often, which I find interesting. But I put that on along the neckline and the very front of the garment. There's a, there's a detail on uh, Yona's costume, and it's along the neckline, and it's only in the manga version. She has a gold and black uh, detail that kind of goes along the neckline of her little vest. I couldn't find one that was exactly the exact same, but I did find this one on Amazon and I found it really pretty. So the pattern's not the same, but it is really nice. It's the right width that I'll need. And I think I'll just make it really fancy. In the anime, she doesn't have this detail, but she has it in the manga. So, and honestly, I'm a huge fan of the manga. I really, really love it. It is my favorite anime manga. So um, I'm really, uh, happy about this find. It's really nice. It's really pretty. It's the right width, which is fantastic. And again, it's not like an accurate um, design on it because hers is very square, but I really liked the roundness of this one. And I found it really, really pretty. So this is what I went with. Um, I'm going to go pin it on and add it to the neckline that I am adding on to the vest. There is something immensely satisfying about top stitching on trims. I love it. A lot of people hate it and find it tedious, but I find it just incredibly satisfying. Both sides were sewn down nice and flat, and this was before the entire uh, strip was sewn down because I didn't want any of that top stitching to be seen on the opposite side on the inside of the garment. Even though it's the inside, it's just my own little nitpick, and I kind of want to do some hand sewing. Once it was all top stitched on, it was time to fold over that band and hide that seam allowance and all that nasty looking top stitching. Actually, it looked pretty good, but you know, we didn't want to see it. So it's hidden on the inside of this band, folded over and hand stitched shut with a slip stitch. I love slip stitching so much. I find it insanely satisfying to do, very calming, very relaxing. I can kind of do it while doing other things like watching TV, and I find it relaxing, I find it satisfying. It is just a thing that I really enjoy doing, and I like the finish of it, which is the important part. It makes it look like there's no stitches keeping it down, which is really cool to me. I much prefer it than having seen a top stitching on the inside, for example. Do keep in mind that is all personal preference. Top stitching this clothes also totally would have worked because there is that trim right there. It's just personal preference and also I did kind of want an excuse to hand stitch and sit down for a bit. There's something just so nice about sitting on the couch with a cup of tea and your hand sewing for a few hours. <laughs> The little vest was finished with a snap and that is how it stays closed. And that garment was then all finished with just the hem after that. 
Next up is this little tummy piece, which I think it wants to be an obi, but not quite. Now this piece needs to go around my entire midriff, under my ribs and a little over my hips. So I actually had to measure those areas because if I had just done my waist, it actually wouldn't have reached around my entire body like it needs to. Thank you Muffin for allowing me to demonstrate the proper removal of those naughty little kitty claws. Now, this piece is actually not a linen like the other ones. It is made of a poly cotton, so it is actually still decently breathable, but does have a little bit of that polyester. I got this fabric because, well, it's the right color, and I couldn't find a linen in the same color. Once I sewed the piece into a tube, I used my corner turner and poked all those little corners out to be nice and crisp. This piece is really quite that simple. It is a rectangle folded in half. Now, this piece took a little longer than I anticipated. This is the little tie that goes in the middle, and that is because, well, I was running out of fabric, so I had to piecework the entire thing together. I had to measure what I had left, and then I had to take it and piecework it all together with French seams. French seams because I didn't want serging to be visible, because I knew that sometimes, depending on how I tied it, you would see the seams. And I had to hem it, and it, honestly, it took a lot longer than it probably would have if I had done it any other way, but, that's all I had left, and sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I feel like Yun would do that too in the anime. It is a good thing I like hemming, because there was quite a bit, because this tie is actually quite long, because it needs to wrap around my body and have a nice big bow. But it worked, and now sometimes you just see a little seam once in a while, and sometimes you see my hems, but they turned out rather clean, so I don't actually mind that much. Now let's move on to the earrings. I found these beads right here, these wooden beads on sale at Michael's and who doesn't love a Michael's sale? It had this little string glued around it, but it was a lightweight wooden bead. So it was kind of perfect and again, on sale. There was a bit of a glue residue, so I did need to sand it, but not that big a deal really. It was on sale after all. And well, luckily, Yona's earrings happened to be the exact shade of one of my acrylic paints, so I was able to paint it without having to mix and remix things every time I painted on a new layer. That was so convenient, and these beads fit right on the end of a small paintbrush. Now, I've made tassels before, and she has some pretty long ones, so I went through my embroidery floss and picked out the exact color I wanted. Because her tassels are a little thinner, I did have to separate all these pieces, so I had to cut, separate, cut, separate, and it was a bit tedious, but it looks a lot better than the chunky embroidery floss, at least in my opinion, and has the effect that I wanted. Now, the process I'm using to make these tassels is something I kind of figured out in around 2019 when I experimented with making tassels for my Tomoyo cosplay. What I do is fold them in half, these long pieces I've cut here, and then I tie them off to keep them nice and secure. Yona happens to have two tie-offs at the very top, so I used a paintbrush to get that exact size I wanted, and then I knotted it off to get that nice little shape that she's got on her earrings. I am sorry the angle isn't better. I try my best while filming, but it is really tricky to both have it in my hands where I can see it well, and also film it. Something else I found at Michael's were these lovely little gold bead caps. And honestly, there's some images of Yona, especially in the manga, where her earrings do have some little bead caps, and it just made it nice and clean looking when I strung it together. I also had to go out and buy more earrings, but this was no problem because actually there's a lot of projects I want to do that require them. So once it was all strung together, I looped it around the earring and then back down into the bead and into the tassel and tied it off. This was a great place to hide it because there was a lot of volume here and it makes it nice and clean and strong. So now I'm at a point where the majority of Yona is finished. So now it's just the wig left. This is an amber classic in the shade Berry from Arta Wigs Canada. And I used my Arta Wigs color wheel to find the best match to my fabric. So Berry ended up being the winner and it's actually really, really close in tone. So today my goal is to finish this cosplay off by finishing off this wig. So what I do when I cut wigs these days is I don't tend to cut it blunt. I kind of pull the blade across a little bit to make it a little softer looking. Otherwise you get this very blunt choppy look. 
Now, keep in mind, I am no hairdresser. I'm actually not very good at cutting hair. But because Yona's hair is cut by a teenage boy, I'm not exactly going to be too concerned about it because her hair is supposed to look kind of wild. That's the point. Her hair is such a huge symbol within the story because at one point it gets cut off the sword, a teenage boy needs to clean it up and make it look better, and it's a huge, huge symbol. So it felt kind of right that I'm not exactly the best, and I didn't have time to call in ye old cousin. Now, something I didn't anticipate while I was originally cutting the wig was how much it would sit out and poof out when I cut it, so I had to do some additional thinning, which was new territory for me. I think I did a decent job, and again, it's very comforting that this character has well choppier hair, because oh boy, this was scary. It really looked like I was something out of Fifth Element for a bit, but I think I got it tamed down to a point that it didn't poof out as much and looked a little thinner and more layered. Maybe I should have started with a different style, but I really wanted this color, and some of the shorter styles didn't have this color of berry available. And now here is the finished wig on my head and with the earrings on as well. For a second, I wasn't liking how it looked, but then once I put the earrings on, moved the bangs around a little bit, I actually ended up really, really liking how the finished wig looks. It does have that very like fresh cut and not like professionally cut look, but that is fine. This character's hair was cut by her friend, Yoon, anyway. So, well, I mean, technically it was cut by a sword and he just made it look better, but still, I think it turned out pretty good. The thinning did a lot for it. Otherwise it was just kind of like out here like this. And I guess that means it's time to put on the whole costume and show you guys all how it looks. So um, let's go do that. Guys, that is my finished Princess Yona cosplay. I am super happy with the results. I'm really excited that I get to wear this in Japan, Nagoya, Japan, during the World Cosplay Summit Osu Parade with Bakeman Cosplay. Like, we're gonna be wearing these together, and this is a dream come true to be going to the World Cosplay Summit, and I am ridiculously excited. As of filming this, uh, we're only a matter of days away from leaving. I'm hoping this video comes out before the World Cosplay Summit, but either way, whether this comes out before or after, the next time you will be seeing me on my channel, it will all be about World Cosplay Summit related content. So get ready, because it's going to be an adventure, I think. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I guess I'll see you in Japan next time. See you later.